Alright guys, so now that you made a game where you can shoot at other players and um, get your unit killed, uh, I don't know why this guy isn't shooting back at me. Kill me! Okay, come on. Do it! Do it now! Okay, okay, I'm dead. So, the issue here is that my unit doesn't respawn and nothing happens and that's it, right? So we want to create that bit of game loop where the player would get back to the action after a while. So let's go back to the game editor and let's take a look at the scripts. So right now when unit dies, we destroy the unit and that's it, right? Uh, but why don't we create a ghost? So the unit will turn into a ghost after it dies. So I'm gonna go to environment tab and I'm gonna go to add new uh, unit and I create a top-down unit and okay we got a ghost sprite um, actually if I'm gonna if I'm gonna use this sprite this isn't really top-down perspective this is more um, side view right so instead of doing top-down I'm gonna um, create a new unit and make it platformer unit where the sprite flips horizontally so I'll choose that okay and this unit cannot die so what I'm gonna do is I'll set health as zero but not only that it's a ghost so I'm gonna change its body type so it can move through walls or other units without colliding um, colliding against them so it there's a field uh, for coll collision so uh, right now it collides with um, items, projectiles, and walls, but I'll make it so it collides with nothing, okay? Um, I'm gonna make it so it does not rotate. Uh, it already is set as that, okay? And as for controls, um, it's set to move using force. Movement control should be WASD, so we can move in all directions. Um, it will flip sprite if the mouse cursor is uh, on the left side of the unit, um, and it will not rotate. I'll make it so it doesn't rotate to follow the mouse cursor. All right, so we got a ghost unit. I'm gonna call it ghost. And now that we created a unit, we're gonna go back to the scripts. And instead of destroying the unit, what I'm gonna do is, well, you know what? Okay, so, so now we're destroying the unit, right? Um, so after destroying the unit, I'm gonna create a new task or new action and we're gonna create a new unit um, create a new unit at position okay and we're gonna do create ghost for who are we creating it for uh, we're gonna create it for um, let me see an owner of a unit that's the triggering unit and I'll explain it to you guys what this means in a second and also I'm gonna create it at a position um, at a position, entity position, which is a unit. So position of the triggering unit. Also, uh, the facing angle, I'll uh, just set it at zero. It should always be zero for non-rotating uh, units. So what's going on here is, um, well, you know what? Also, before destroying uh, our, we're gonna move this action to go before destroying the unit. So he, let me explain what the triggering unit here is. So if you um, watch the last tutorial, the triggering unit is the unit that's um, mentioned in the triggers, right? So when the unit's attribute becomes zero or less, this script is triggered and it runs, right? So when a unit's health became zero, um, we are going to create a ghost unit for the triggering unit's owner. Okay, um, and at the position of the triggering unit as well. And then after creating the ghost unit, we're gonna destroy the triggering unit, which is the, the gunman, right? So the next thing I'm gonna do is to add an action for camera so that the camera will start tracking the newly created unit, right? So we're going to make uh, the the player who's the owner of the last created unit, which is the ghost, to track the last created unit, which is also the ghost. 
right? So this will do, okay? Um, so th what this should do is so that uh, if your unit's dead, uh, it will get destroyed, and we're going to create a ghost for the, the same owner of the unit that just got destroyed, and we'll make the camera to track that unit, uh, which is the ghost. So I'm going to republish it, and let's take a look at what happens. Okay, so there's no one here. Uh, wait, somebody else joined the game. Uh, if you're watching my stream, come to the center. There you are. Can you go ahead and kill me? Kill me now. Okay, there you go. So I'm dead, and I'm now I'm now a ghost, and I move really fast. But I don't collide with anything, as you can see. I just go right through the walls. Um, and I don't rotate. It doesn't rotate to the mouse. It only flips so that it looks at the mouse cursor, which is what I wanted. Um, so the next thing I want to do is I want to make it so after a while I'm a ghost. I want it so that I can respawn as the fighter unit, uh, the gunman unit, uh, let's say after about 10 seconds. Uh, but the first thing I want to do is I want to make it so the ghost unit moves a bit slower. So I'm going to reduce the speed uh, from 10 to, let's say, 4. Okay. And then um, let's take a look at the scripts. So we're killing the unit, and we want to add another script called uh, respawn. Okay. And what happens here is um, after about 5 seconds, the ghost will respawn as the player unit at a random position. Uh, sorry, it will respawn as a gunman unit at a random position. So we're going to go to environment. And one thing we need to do is we need to set a timer. Okay, And we're going to go to human players, player types. This is where you can actually set up attributes for players. Um, and we're going to create a new attribute. And we'll call it respawn timer. Attributes are great because um, not only you can show them as like a health bar or other attributes of the unit, uh, but you can also set the regenerate speed so they can actually act as a timer as well. Uh, and the regenerate speed, uh, it, it executes um, the whatever value you put in. It, it increments the value uh, at every, I think, uh, it happens at every 200 millisecond. So it runs about five times a second. So, for example, if I have the value of 100, um, and if I were to enter 10, um, it will take about, sorry, if I take, if I put in 20, it will take about um, one second to uh, fill the uh, value from 0 to 100. Uh, but instead, I want to do it so that um, it takes 5 seconds, so 20 divided by 5 is 4, so we'll do 4 as a regenerative, uh, regenerative speed. And just for debugging purpose, I'm going to show the respawn timer, and we're going to go ahead and save it. Okay, so we got a, a variable attribute for the human players. So whichever player that is assigned to the human player player type, uh, that player will have that attribute, which, let me take a look. When player joins, what are we doing here? We are creating the unit for that player, and we are assigning that triggering player to human players, right? So every human player will have um, that attribute. So when unit dies, right, we are going to add another action where we are going to set player attribute. Uh, we call it respawn timer, and uh, that's going to be for the owner of uh, last created unit. Okay, so we're setting the respawn timer uh, as zero because what's going to happen is it's going to be set to zero and automatically it's going to regenerate uh, four, uh, four per every one fifth of a second and eventually it will, uh, it will be full, right? And we have a trigger function where it checks if the attribute becomes full. So here it says when a player's attribute becomes full, right? Uh, we're going to add an if condition check to make sure that we're talking about the right attribute, right? So we're going to do an attribute type comparison. So if the attribute type of the triggering attribute equals to um, respawn timer, what we're going to do is we are going to destroy entity 
but which entity are we destroying, right? We need to be able to uh, make a reference to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a for loop. Okay. So for all units in a unit group, and the unit group being all units by owned by a player, which is uh, uh, the triggering player. So for all units that are owned by the player whose attribute just became full, right? We're going to destroy all those units. Destroy selected unit, which is the uh, current unit in the for loop. So once we destroy all of the unit, what we're going to do is we're going to create a unit. Okay, um, create a unit at a, a position, and we're going to create it uh, as a unit, a gunman, um, for the uh, triggering player. At a, let's spawn it at a random position in the map. So, uh, whoops, wrong, uh, random position in the entire map region. There you go. Facing is zero angle. Good. So we're creating the gunman again, and we have to make sure that the camera is going to be um, tracking that unit as well. Make triggering player uh, camera to track the last created unit. There we go. Um, that should do it. So let's see uh, what happens. All right, I need someone to join the game to kill me. Come on. There you are. All right, do it. Ah, uh, okay, I'm dead. I'm a ghost. And let's see what happens after five seconds. You can see the ghost is a lot slower now, too. All right, look, I respawned after five seconds. Perfect, right? Let me, let me kill you. All right, there you go, you're a ghost. And uh, you can also see that the bullet goes right through the ghost because um, the collision made it so that the ghost doesn't collide with the uh, projectiles. Okay, in our next tutorial, we're gonna talk about how to add more weapons or other types of items. So stay tuned and uh, don't forget to subscribe and uh, leave comment in the video. I'll make sure to read them and respond to them. All right, peace out.